Now, 21 years ago on this November 18th, a deluxe cruise ship departed from the South Korean port of Tonghe and set sail for the first cruise to Mount Kumgang in North Korea. It was the first people to people exchange between the two Koreas after more than 50 years of separation. The program, however, got suspended in 2008 after a North Korean soldier shot dead a South Korean tourist who had unknowingly wandered into a military area. Once regarded as a symbol of reconciliation between the two Koreas, our correspondent in charge of North Korean affairs, Oh Jung Hee, takes us through the 21 years of ups and downs. Located along the east coast of the Korean peninsula, Mount Kumgang is a celebrated mountain for the Korean nation, recognized for its long history and dazzling natural beauty. But because Korea was divided after the Korean War and the mountain was located north of the border, South Korean citizens couldn't visit. But in 1998, things changed. Jung Ju Young, the founder of South Korea's Hyundai Group, went to North Korea and signed an agreement with North Korea's Asia Pacific Peace Committee to develop the Mount Kumgang area and run a tour program. Jung taking 500 heads of cattle north of the border is a well known episode in modern Korean history. Later that year, on November 18th, South Korean tours to Mount Kumgang officially began. It marked a historic start with a cruise ship named Kumgang carrying over 800 South Koreans to the mountain via sea. In 2002, Mount Kumgang Resort became the venue for the reunions of South and North Korean families separated by the Korean War. And traveling to the site by land route was enabled in 2003. But in 2008, a South Korean tourist was shot dead by a North Korean soldier, prompting Seoul to immediately stop the tours. In 2010, North Korea froze South Korea's assets there and canceled Hyundai Group's exclusive business rights. Mount Kumgang tours were a symbol of inter-Korean cooperation. Before the tours were halted, 200 to 300,000 South Koreans visited the mountain annually, and the total number of South Korean visitors since 1998 reached almost 2 million. Seoul says the mountain itself holds significance not only as a tourist area, but also as a place where war-torn families meet and social exchanges happen. At their summit in Pyongyang in September last year, the leaders of the two Koreas agreed to normalize Mount Kumgang tours as conditions are met. And through his New Year's address this year, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said he was willing to resume the tours without any precondition or price. But despite the strong will, restarting the inter-Korean tour project has not been easy in terms of sanctions. The tours themselves do not violate the sanctions, but the transfer of bulk cash to the regime, which is highly probable once tours resume, is strictly banned under UN resolutions. Now, since North Korean leader Kim Jong-un ordered the removal of South Korean facilities at Mount Kumgang a month ago, the fate of tours there took a new and disappointing turn. Seoul suggested holding talks to discuss the tours as a whole, but North Korea is firm that it'll go ahead and tear down the facilities if Seoul doesn't do so. While Pyongyang is ramping up pressure on Seoul, the fate of the symbolic inter-Korean project remains unclear. Oh Jung-hee, Arirang News.